a young girl raised his hand. A girl that was in J1, class one. And I said, yes. He said, Governor, why don't you, why is it that you don't keep your promise? Before, as he was saying it, the principal ran from the back. Held her in the mouth. Right, you have just heard a little bit of what the story that Peter Obi told the people of Akwaiwum when he had a town hall meeting with them. And uh, I would like you to watch the entire video to hear exactly um, the kind of question that was thrown to him and the responses he gave that led to that particular story. It, it, it was quite an interesting one. The people of Akwaiwum, they really applauded him for what he said. And that was a pointer to the fact that it is we followers that actually is poor leadership. Let me allow you to watch the entire video for yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Odura Basiasuko and this is my question. Okay, sir, the problem that I, we have in Nigeria, obviously, is terrible leadership. And what? Terrible, terrible leadership. Question, please. So, the, my question is this. What since we seem to have just two platforms, like let's say two political parties that are actually involved in Nigeria, what are the other platforms that a youth can have to participate in Nigerian politics? My, my dear, uh, let me correct you. <laughs> one minute, one minute, one minute. We don't have terrible leadership. We actually have again. Let me tell you. We also have terrible followership. Yes. You have listened to me say it. I've been in office. Let me tell you the greatest problem that is in the, let me tell you the greatest problem that is in our country today. It is not that we have yes, the number one problem is leadership. But what is even worse? Before I, I was a governor for eight years. For eight years, from the one that I started, what do you get? First, you start seeing the so called elites, the so called powerful royal fathers, and everybody coming to pay you cost call. They will write and say they want to see you, they come to your office. Once you open the door, they say, hey, Peter, since you came here, eh, hey, the world has changed. I didn't know this is this good. You haven't done anything, though. No? You know yourself, you have not done anything. This person will be praising you. And your silence, eh? hey, we didn't know there's anybody like you in this world. Ah, uh, listen, that one, and when he's going, of course, you heard me say, when he's going, you have this bunch of people, they call protocol people. Now, who calls us? Oh, God, uh -uh. The man is going, you know. We didn't give him anything, you know, that uh, usually when they come, they normally give them uh, maybe 200,000 or this. And, and I said, listen, hey, hey, wait a minute. This man just said he wants to see me. I didn't invite him. He was in Kenya. So why are we going to give him money? It's well, not going to give you anything else. Transport phase. Sir. Then you have people who say, oh. You have people who say, hey, we want to do Thanksgiving for you. A church. We must pray for you. You enter the church. You see this and say, hey, since you came, God has turned this place around. God Almighty, God is a... And then, the same people will tell you, say, ah. Uh -uh. We didn't come with anything to give. I said, the man said he wants to thank God to bless us. So, why are we going to give him money? And he became a quarrel with people. Because they thought, oh, and everything. The same thing, you are going around everywhere six months after being governor or minister or anything. Somebody voted. I didn't have a house in my village. You invite people and say you're doing Thanksgiving with a big house, several vehicles. Your wife will even have a shabby uniform for the Thanksgiving. God will multiply it. These are just stolen our money. Instead of calling police, 
They are celebrating him. That is the major problem of the country. Well said, sir. Follow us. You know where I got the truth? If I tell you where I got the truth, you hear me say it every day. I use one local government, one town called Obo Family. Obo Family is the bomber, the last town in Anambra State. If you are going through where we call or cannot, nobody had ever visited there. I went there. The whole town was dancing. They were very happy. The parents. I looked at three little children because they were in front of me. I was fond of school children. And I said to them, this are under 12. Do you know me? Yes. Do you have any problem? He pointed, our school has no roof. The parents are here praising me and calling me His Excellency. Wonderful man. But there's a school just looking at here without the roof. The parents did not see it. The other one, they have, no, they have no teacher. They have no toilet. These three people have a problem. And that's it. I once went to secondary school and promised the secondary school that I'm going to, because I visited all the secondary schools. I once went to secondary school, promised them that I'm going to come back before Christmas and give them a check to do their roof for seven million naira because that's what the bill i didn't do it in january every year i will bring schools to do what we call students interaction i brought this school mother of mercy let me remember the name azibo the school is a a young girl raised his hand a girl that was in js1 class one and i said yes he said, Governor, why don't you, why is it that you don't keep your promise? Before, as he was saying it, the principal ran from the back, <laughs> held her in the mouth. <laughs> but he was just about to tell me the truth. And I said, I'm telling you what a life story. I'm telling you a life story. I'm sure when you tell this story, everybody in Anambra will tell The principal ran from the back. And I said, Principal, leave this girl to tell me. He said, you didn't keep your promise. You came to our school and he called the exact date I came, made the promise, and I didn't come back. And I said, okay, wait. I called, commission, I called the Commission of Education. I said, what happened? He said, hey, we've actually, because whenever I go to any place and promise, you must write the check. He said, we have actually done that check, but we will not deliver. I said, go and bring it. They brought it. I said, I called the young girl, said, I'm sorry, you were right. And I apologize to you. Here is your check. The same place I came from the back, I carried on here. I was going to have to So you see, this is the, this is the, this is the crisis. This is the crisis of our country. This is the crisis of our country. That's why I said, we must take it back. It's not whether I would have one party or two party. You told him and part to told me that they are good. Let's take it back and follow them. Absolutely.